Good evening everybody, Suzanne Dibble here, data protection law expert, coming to you raw and uncut. And a quick video this evening, I wanted to pick up on something that someone had posted in the group about opt-ins, uh, lead magnets and opt-ins. And I know this is a big issue for people in the group, mainly. Uh, so, um, so I thought it was uh, worth putting on a separate video. I did comment on his post, but um, I thought it would be useful for uh, a lot of you in the group. So, lead magnets. For those of you who don't know what a lead magnet is, it's when you give away a valuable bit of information in exchange for somebody's email address. And, and the question is, do we have to have a tick box at the point where the person is putting in the email address? Well, the answer is not necessarily. Because the act of putting in the email address itself is, in my view, an affirmative act which signifies consent. Okay, just for sending them the lead magnet. I'm not talking about follow up marketing, I'm just talking about sending them the lead magnet. But what the person posted, he said, okay, can I do that? Can I get them to pop in their email address and send them the lead magnet? And then in the email when you send them the lead magnet, can you at that point say to them, would you like to receive details of my marketing? Obviously a much better jazzed up marketing speak than that. But you would get your opt-in in the body of the email sending the lead magnet. Um, and in my view, that is fine because you're, getting, you're being upfront, you're getting an affirmative action to get the consent for both things both for the initially sending the lead magnet that's been, been requested by them popping in their email address and then for them opting in to for the marketing. Now, remember, it does have to be opt-in. It can't be opt-out. Pre-tick boxes you can't have, but I don't see any reason why you can't separate the process in the way that's, that was suggested in the group. Now, other things to note are that you need to have, a, you still do need to have a link to your privacy notice or your privacy policy. Um, at the point that they pop in their email address for uh, the lead magnet. So you would have a little line underneath where they put, put in their email address that says, um, we, we um, will uh, collect, use and protect your data in accordance with our privacy policy, link to your privacy policy. Now remember, you're not getting people to consent to your privacy policy or notice. I use those words interchangeably. Um, you're only advising people of your privacy notice, but you do need to give it to them at the point of collection of the data. Um, so you would have that there um, underneath the lead magnet where people are entering their email address. And then when you are um, asking them for the opt in uh, for further marketing, you would at that point, it's probably worth putting in another link to the privacy notice, even though they've probably had it when they uh, you know, when they had it available when they opted in, but I'd put another link to the privacy policy there and also say that they can opt out at any time. So that should be there too. Um, and yes, as I say, remember, it's opt in, not opt out. But as long as, um, yeah, I just don't, I don't see why that shouldn't work because you're getting affirmative, it's an affirmative action. It's, it's clear consent, you're being upfront. Um, I don't see why that can't work. Now, I don't know whether statistically you're more likely to get people to opt in in the body of an email than on a tick box on your lead magnet. I don't know. I'm guessing that the person who's asked knows these things and that you are likely to get more people to opt in once um, they've actually received the lead magnet. And I suppose certainly if they, you know, if they, um, they read the lead magnet and can see that it is of uh, super value and that you're you know, you're, you're clearly someone that they want to hear from going forwards, then the chance of them ticking that, you know, they can, even if they don't tick it immediately, they can go back to that email and opt in. Uh, whereas obviously, if you have a tick box at the point of entering the details, they've not experienced your lead magnet. And it's a kind of a one, one off chance, isn't it? So I can kind of see the logic there. So yeah, so I think that is not a bad idea at all. And then do remember, I covered this in my marketing video, uh, marketing training, um, but do remember the bit about the psychology of people uh, who will, it's human psychology to put off making decisions if we can. 
Uh, so if you just have an opt-in box or do nothing, then people will err towards doing nothing. But if you have an opt-in and an opt-out box, then it will encourage people to take action. Now, obviously, if they, um, if they still don't do anything, even though they're presented with two choices, you would not be able to opt them into your marketing. But psychologically, it encourages people to actually do something and, and therefore they're more likely to opt in. So, yeah, so I think that, um, you know, that would be an effective way of obtaining consent. Um, it's kind of similar to what I'm doing at the moment uh, with people who are, um, uh, well, it's nearly similar because we're not, we're not obviously, GDPR isn't in force yet. But I think it's, it's, it's certainly something that I'll be doing going forward with the group uh, because as people uh, come into the group, we ask them the, uh, the three questions. One of those is, would you like to receive our free checklist? And people put their email address in at that point. Now, for me, that is affirmative consent. They want to receive that checklist. Then going forwards, uh, when I'm sending them the free checklist, then I will ask them at that point to uh, opt in to further marketing. So I hope that's useful for people. I know there's, you know, lead magnets and tick boxes is, is it's a hot topic and rightly so, because, you know, a lot of uh, digital marketing businesses rely on that, um, you know, that route into um, a people being a customer. And if uh, the chances of people not ticking that box to receive further marketing is going to be significantly affected, then we do need to, uh, you know, think a little bit outside of the box and see, uh, you know, what ways we can encourage people to opt in while still be within the confines of GDPR. So I hope that's helpful. Um, thank you to um, the guy who asked the question. I'll tag you in the comments below. Um, and keep the questions coming. It's, um, it's always a good exercise of the old grey matter. So whatever you're doing tonight on a Saturday night, hope you're enjoying yourselves and I'll see you soon.